The last thing I want to show you is in our tracks pane. Uh, right now it says waveform. Uh, what we want to look at is all of the different options that we can view in terms of our, our track pane. Right now uh, we're looking at the waveform, which is we're on an audio track. I can say block, which is basically just looking at the regions as blocks. You don't actually see the content within inside the region. If I click on this, I can go to playlists, which will come into play once we're working with different takes uh, on a particular track. We don't really have that right now. You notice these are grayed out. I'll come back to those. We have waveform, which is what we're, we're, the default is. It actually shows the region and the content. If this was a MIDI track, you can actually see the MIDI data. Volume. Now this is old school in regards to the automation, how it used to be. So if you like working this way, you like to see your lane of automation on top of your, your regions, you can certainly do it this way. I can grab my pencil tool and draw in uh, volume information. We also have mutes and our pans. Same thing can, can be said for our MIDI regions up here. You can look at, as I've already shown you, the, the notes. You can also look at velocity. Again, as I mentioned earlier, all of the editing was basically done on the page. You had to actually had to zoom in around the notes and work with the notes from the arrangement page, which I'm not a big fan of. I much prefer the new way, which is using the audio ed or the MIDI editor, which we'll look at in just a little bit. Uh, but I do want to point out Elastic Audio. Elastic Audio is one of the coolest things uh, that's been added to Pro Tools LE. You notice it's sort of that's what the warp and the analysis have to do with. So I'm going to go down here, and you'll see this little gray box right underneath. It says dynamic. And um, you will see polyphonic, rhythmic, monophonic, and very speed, and X form. The polyphonic is really good for any kind of general material. It's great if you have a full song, like you're pulling off of a CD. You want to drop it in. You want to do some sort of time stretch. Uh, you want it to conform to whatever your song's tempo is. That's the one uh, that, that works best for like the most complex material. You have Rhythmic, which is really good at keeping the timing of drum loops together. You have Monophonic, which is more focused on, say, the pitch. Those are what those al algorithms, all these have different algorithms and they're all sort of focused on different aspects of the, uh, of the sound. What it's doing is what we call time compression expansion. This is where it takes a drum loop and, uh, or an audio file, and you can either speed it up or slow it down by compressing or expanding it. So it's either removing information to make it play faster, it's shortening it, or it's expanding it in order to make it play longer. So each of these have different algorithms. You also have very speed. Now very speed is kind of cool, especially for kind of special effects, because it causes it to uh, react as if it was a, uh, a turntable. So if you're speeding up a, a, a disc, a platter, on your, on your turntable, if you pitch it up, it's going to play faster, but it's also going to pitch everything up sound-wise. Everything's going to seem a little bit higher. This is where just kind of Jungle came from. Uh, jungle was a, like a lot of old breakbeat stuff that had been resampled and pitched up. That's how they got it to sound like that. The last one is called X-Form. This is probably the best option in terms of sound quality but it's a rendered only, meaning it's an offline process. It goes through, it analyzes it, it processes it, and replaces the original with this X-Form one. So it's probably going to sound the best, but it's also not done in real time. The rest of these are all real time. So you can always go back and adjust it, or you know, it's not set in stone per se. So we're just going to keep it on, well, let's, since this is a drum loop, let's go ahead and keep it on rhythmic. And uh, we can also take a look at the warp. You can see how everything is sort of warped. You can see where all the warp markers are, each of these little bars. I can also switch this to analysis, and the analysis allows me to actually get in and adjust any of those warp markers if you need to. If, uh, if it didn't do a good enough job or if you wanted to remove uh, certain ones, they can be removed in this way. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and we'll put this back on waveform. And since we have this on rhythmic, let's go ahead and listen to it. I'm going to turn on the metronome, though, because I want you all to hear. Okay, the metronome is on. Let's go ahead and listen to this, because I'm more than certain it's going to be out of time. So 
you can hear my metronome is playing much faster than my drum loop. So what we need to do in order to get this to conform to our tempo is go up under Regions to Conform to Tempo. You'll see it now, it's just shrunk it down. Uh, it's fitted into its four bar loop, which is what it is. I can select this, I'm gonna hit play, and this should speed up our drum loop. 